Hello, welcome to Front Range Community College's Pathways to Success on-demand videos. This particular video is about concurrent enrollment students who are planning to come to Front Range after they graduate high school. My name is Janelle Bonavita and I'm one of the admissions and outreach representatives at the Westminster campus. Some benefits of attending Front Range Community College would be our very small class sizes, an average of about 19 students, our very affordable tuition prices, our guaranteed transfer classes onto the four-year schools, um, being able to start in your career field faster with over 60 plus career programs that can be completed in um, from less than a semester to maybe even a year. And because we're close to home for a lot of our students, a lot of students still live at home, or live in an apartment or house, very close to home. Some of the admission steps that students will take would be to possibly reapply, and I'll go into all these steps in a little bit more detail um, here shortly. So possibly reapplying, logging into their student eWolf account, the biggest thing is going to be submitting the pre-registration form meeting with the Pathways Advisor to help kind of plan out um, your uh, degree, your certificate, your transfer plan, any of those. Then also to complete a new student orientation to kind of get connected with other classmates, um, explore your program, and learn some strategies to be successful college students. So as far as the application, some students might need to reapply and some students might not. If you've taken a front range class as part of concurrent enrollment within the last academic year, so during the fall semester or the spring semester of your senior year, um, then you would not need to reapply to front range. If it's been more than a year since you took classes, maybe took them as a sophomore or a junior, you might you will need to reapply. Um, applications are active for 12 months, so if it's been more than a year, students will need to reapply for the fall semester or the spring semester if they're hoping to start. Um, you'll use your same username and login information that you used when you originally applied. So just create a new undergraduate application, but it will actually pull over the information from your previous application. So it'll be a much shorter process, about five minutes. So just go through and update the information, make sure that you know, if you got a new cell phone number, new address, that all your information is updated there. You'll end up with the same student number that you were already issued. And then after that, um, if it's been more than a year, then you might have to wait a couple days to be able to log into eWolf, usually one to two days for just to get reactivated. So if you do need to reapply, then you can find this Apply Now button anywhere pretty much on our, um, on our web page, the bright red Apply Now button. It will take you to the Apply Now page where you just click on the Finish Your Application, and then it will take you to the actual application sign-in page, um, where that's an email address, is your username, your password. If you forgot your password, don't worry. There's a little uh, Forgot Your Password link there, and it will send it to whatever email is associated with your account. If you don't remember your username or email address that you used, um, or if by chance your account is locked, then go ahead and contact um, any of the admissions offices at any of the campuses and we'll be more than happy to unlock your account for you. So the uh, enrollment process, after students are able to um, either reapply or if they are a current student, then the next step is gonna be logging into eWolf. And if you forgot your password for eWolf, no worries, you can just press the forgot your password button there and it will actually log, or it will send an email to whatever um, email was recorded on your application. Uh, when logging into eWolf, you're gonna use your student number, you're gonna use a capital S and then the numbers that follow it and then whatever password that you picked. So enrollment steps for all current enrollment students, whether it was in the past or there's a present, you're all gonna have the same enrollment steps. Um, even if you're taking a class, you know, second semester, senior year, you're still gonna have to follow some enrollment steps uh, to be to continue in the summer or to continue in the fall that, uh, that following year. So your first step is logging into eWolf. Uh, once you log in, it might prompt you to double check your personal information, like your, um, your address, your phone number, things like that. So all concurrent enrollment students, we want you to update that personal information. We want you to accept, make sure the phone number is correct, make sure the email address is correct, all those different things. Um, you might also want to change your major, and I'll go into that a little bit more here shortly. But if you need to change your major, it might be because you took a business class while you were in high school, but you actually plan on majoring in psychology or you plan on majoring in um, automotive classes. You know, So if you need to change your major um, based on the different program that you took from high school, I'll go over that here in a little bit, those steps. Every student's gonna to have to complete the pre-registration form. That form is very, very important. That's how we assign you an advisor and that's how we double check your program of study. And we also use that form to decide whether or not you need to do placement testing. All students will also have to meet with um, and their pathways advisor that is assigned to them based on that pre-registration form. And all students will also create, uh, or also uh, go to a new student orientation or a virtual new student orientation. So if you need to change that program of study, you're going to log into your eWolf account, and on the very top, you'll see the Student Resources button there. 
Um, you're not going to click on the actual student resources button, but the little carrot next to it. And then you'll see student forms right there that'll kind of pull up the drop down menu. And then from there, you're going to uh, click on the degree and certificate change request form. And you'll submit that. And then within a couple of days, um, it'll go to the registrar's office and they'll be able to update your degree or certificate program. Um, you can also see there are lots of other very important student forms there. Um, the personal information change request form, so if you need to change a preferred name uh, or if there were some other issues with your paperwork, all those different forms are right there for you to access. We also suggest that you check out your transcripts. Um, look at see which uh, classes you completed, which grades you received in those classes, how many credits you earned. You can also use that information when you're filling out the pre-registration form. So we make sure that your advisor has the most up-to-date information. Once you're in eWolf, all students are going to click on Navigate. And within Navigate, you're going to complete your particular to-do items. And it'll take you to the separate site where you see our nice welcoming page there with um, our wolf, our mascot. His name is Apollo. And it'll take you to your to-do items for enrollment. So when you're on that enrollment page, the to-do item page the, within Navigate, you'll have these to-do items. We understand that they are not going to happen today. It says today's to-do items, but um, we know that it's going to take, probably take more than one day to complete these different items. Don't worry, if you don't see anything there, you do still have items to complete, and you'll click on that little funnel there in the top right corner, and you'll uh, look up your overdue or past due items there, and it will bring up the same list. Um, the most important thing on here is submitting the pre-registration form. That's the biggest thing that you have to do on this particular form. Um, it will also remind you to um, possibly fill out financial aid forms, to apply for the scholarships, to uh, make your advising appointment, to signing up for your new student orientation, these particular um, to-do items, they're not going to automatically check off, but you'll check them off as you go and be able to um, just kind of keep yourself on track. You're also going to want to check your holes. And you can see up there, there's a little triangle with the exclamation point on it. Every student um, coming into their first semester is going to have a new student orientation hold and a new student advising hold. So you want to make sure that you cover both of those steps before you register for classes. Um, so your advisor, when you meet with them, will be able to remove that hold. So as far as placement testing, um, placement testing is not used to determine whether or not you're accepted into the front, into front range or any community college. Um, the best part about community college is that everyone is accepted. So the placement testing is used to see where you would place within your English and math courses. Your pre-enrollment advisor will let you know if you need to complete testing because not everybody does. Um, and that pre-enrollment advisor is going to know that based on what you put in your pre-registration form. So generally, students do not have to complete testing um, if they received a B or higher in their um, English or math class within their junior or senior level of um, high school, whether they have an unweighted GPA of about a 3.0, so about a B average there. If you've taken AP or IB exams in English and math, those scores will also let the pre-enrollment team whether, know whether or not you need to complete testing. If you have ACT scores, um, 18 or higher for English, 19 or higher for math, SAT scores of 470 for verbal or 500 for math, um, or if you earned a C or higher in an English or math class at a different college. So maybe you took an enrollment through um, a, a, like maybe the Community College of Denver or um, you know, Community College of Aurora or something like that. If you took another college level English or math class, then um, we know that you're ready for college level courses. And that's basically what all this, you know, the placement testing, um, the placement in your classes. We just want to make sure that we get you at the right level. And again, your pre-enrollment advisor will let you know whether or not you need to complete testing. Some of you may have already done uh, some form of testing like the AccuPlacer test, which is a free test on campus. Um, you may have done that before taking your class. It depends on which class you took in concurrent enrollment, whether or not you had to do the placement test um, ahead of time. So, But again, not everyone is required to do testing. The pre-enrollment team will let you know if you need to complete that. At Front Range, we have um, our six different career and academic communities. All of our programs fall into one of these different career and academic communities, and our advisors, our pathway advisors, are assigned to one of these um, six different career and academic communities. The nice thing about that is that your advisor then is kind of specialized in that area. So if you're going to go into, um, you know, be phlebotomy or EMT, nursing, then your um, pathways advisor is specialized in that area, and they're going to be able to help you navigate all the courses you need to make, uh, take to be able to, you know, go through that program. Uh, same with like our automotive, we have particular advisors with that program, um, English degree, theater degree, all these different areas. Your Pathways Advisor is assigned to you for the entire time that you're with us at Front Range. 
So in addition, we have over 35 Associates of Applied Science programs. These are our career and technical education programs, a lot of those. And what that is, is it's meant to get you into a career field faster. So as a two-year full-time degree program, you'll be able to get into a career in a very short amount of time. We also have over 60 credit, um, 60 certificate options that can lead to maybe an entry-level career or maybe make you just a more desirable candidate. Some of our very short certificate programs, anything from uh, maybe less than a semester to about a year for some of our certificate programs. In addition, there's a fairly new program in Colorado, which is the Bridge to Bachelor's Degree Program. And this is um, you know, kind of sponsored by the Colorado Community College System, so the CCCS. And all 13 community colleges in the state of Colorado are participating in this program. And basically what it is is any first-time students who are attending a community, Colorado Community College System college are guaranteed to be accepted into a participating four-year university or college uh, once they complete an associate's degree. So that's an associate's of arts or an associate's of science degree. And you can check the website there for more information. Currently, there are eight different colleges that are participating, the four-year um, colleges that are participating in this program with the community college system. So again, it's basically, it's a guaranteed path to be admitted into that next four-year school. Going to Front Range can save you a lot of money um, over the long term. So in one semester, it's usually about $2,500 for a full-time student. Then in a year, it's about $5,000, which means that you can get through a full two-year degree with about $10,000. Um, books and materials can cost a little bit more, so that can be low, you know, $500 per semester, but we do have the option for students to rent books, to do ebooks, um, to be able to save a little bit more money on that. In addition, we hope that you really will apply for the Front Range Foundation Scholarship. They award over $700,000 a year in scholarships. It's one application for all of our scholarships. We try to make it nice and easy for you. Um, the application opens December 1st of every single year and closes March 1st of every single year. So you can apply for it in your first year, your second year, however many years you're here with us at Front Range. We also hope that students will apply for the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the CASFA, the CARTA Application for State Financial Aid for students who cannot or do not want to fill out the FAFSA. Um, for the FAFSA, you're going to fill it out at the studentaid.gov, and that's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid there. And that is how you get um, federal grants, loans, work study program, all that's through the FAFSA. And then we also have the College Opportunity Fund. As a concurrent enrollment student, you already had to sign up for that program. It's required by the school districts and required by Front Range to be part of concurrent enrollment. If you've already done that. Um, so you'll get an automatic discount off of your tuition bill um, for every credit that you take just by being in the state of Colorado. And if you have any questions about financial aid or about your financial aid package, you can always contact the financial aid department and their email address is just finaid, so F-I-N-A-I-D. Again, that's F-I-N-A-I-D at frontrange.edu and they're more than happy to answer any of your financial aid questions. At Front Range, we have lots of academic and support and student resources. Um, this is just a kind of a, you know, a short list of all the programs that we have. So we have our Pathways Advisors. Again, they are assigned to you when you start at Front Range and they see you all the way through. Our faculty and instructors, we have our supplemental peer instructors, which are basically tutors that kind of come back into the class. Um, they've already passed the class and they come back in to help other students. We have our um, academic success center on every campus, so tutoring for English and math. Uh, we have our libraries on the campuses. We also have our trio student support services, which is available on most of our campuses. And that is a program for any student who is a first generation college student, a low income family, documented disability. We hope that you apply for our TRIO program. It gets you um, kind of one-on-one -on -one mentoring as well as additional tutoring. And just a lot of support services at the campus. Um, in addition, we have personal counseling available for all students. Um, so you get uh, so many sessions a, a year or a semester just for personal counseling, whatever that might be, you know, um, family relationships, all those different areas. We also have our Career Success Center where students can get assistance, um, particularly, you know, finding out which job area they'd like to go into, maybe setting up a job shadow or an internship, um, or maybe just narrowing that career path down. They also do a lot of um, interview prep and resume prep. So they're really willing to help you kind of get to that next step and make yourself more marketable when you're going into the job field or the workforce. We also have our Disability Support Services Center, and that's for any student who has a documented disability, and they can help you get accommodations while you're here. Then we have our Veteran Services Center for students who are active military or dependents. And then our student organizations and clubs, that can be anything from student government to tabletop gaming to um, uh, you know, the, the student newspaper, lots of different clubs and organizations you can be involved in. 
So please contact us if you have any questions. Any of your admissions offices are more than happy to answer anything for you. Thank you very much.